Australians own just 4.3% in the companies extracting and processing natural gas across the country, according to a new study by the Australia Institute. The research reveals the companies making super profits from the gas price spikes are sending most of the dividends offshore, while households are left with the escalating energy costs. As this chart shows, Gorgon is Australia's largest single resource project and is 100% foreign owned by Chevron. The Wheatstone project, the country's largest natural gas hub, is also 98% foreign owned. The Australia Institute's Mark Oag says these high levels of foreign ownership are creating numerous issues, including a direct transfer of wealth from Australian households and businesses to the overseas owners of the LNG companies. Well, this is a really big problem um, because not only does it mean that we're not getting the benefits of the once-off uh, extraction of our of our resource of our resources, but um, the, it, but the but the fact that they're exporting allows them to gouge Australian customers on prices as well. So, if you look at what's happening now, we've got an unprecedented energy crisis, um, and yet at the same time, these companies are exporting large amounts of LNG to the spot market, the international spot market, um, to take advantage of the really high prices. And then Australian customers have to compete with those export prices. So the companies make windfall profits and then 95.7% of those profits are flowing directly overseas. So um, what you've got is basically a direct transfer of wealth from Australian households and businesses who are having to pay these exorbitant prices for energy to the overseas owners of these LNG companies. So how have these companies been able to structure themselves this way, particularly when you look at foreign ownership laws and the FERB? Well, I guess the, the processes um, haven't been rigorous enough, uh, but what I would... And also ownership changes over time and the companies aren't all that transparent uh, with their ownership. But what I think is a really important point to make is the strategy of raising domestic gas prices was entirely deliberate and at odds with what the companies uh, told the Australian, Australian governments at the time that they were seeking approval for the projects. So, for instance, in their economic assessments, Santos in particular um, said that uh, the projects wouldn't affect uh, domestic gas prices, but at the same time they were telling their investors that they had a deliberate strategy of linking domestic gas prices to uh, global gas prices so they could charge Australian customers more, which is fraudulent, really, and they've, and they've never been held to account for that. The ATO shows that five of the gas industry's most prominent companies paid no income tax for the past seven years, and that was despite a jump in income from their Australian operations of $138 billion. I mean, why is this happening? Because we have a petroleum resource rent tax. Is that not working? Well, the Australian petroleum resource rent tax has uh, very generous de uh, deduction allowances, which means that they can... Um, yeah, make a lot of deductions and reduce their uh, liability for the tax. But there's there's a number of things here. There's the the income tax, the corporate tax that they pay, and very few of them pay uh, any any company income tax at all. And then there's the petroleum resource rent tax, and and very few of them pay any of that. And uh, on top of that. Um, a lot of a lot of these companies don't pay any royalties for the for the gas either. So, for instance, in Western Australia, two thirds of the LNG is not subject to any state or federal royalties, and the companies don't pay any petroleum resource rent tax. So, and mostly don't pay any company tax either. So, they're getting the resource for free. Vast quantities of gas, two thirds of the of the gas exported from WA. Uh, and they're not paying any tax either. So it's an absolute rort. So are the companies really at fault here or is it just Australia's accommodative tax regime? Well, um, global oil and gas companies do what I, global oil and gas companies do, which is try and maximise their profit and aggressively minimise their tax. But responsibility uh, is squarely with um, Australian governments, state and federal, uh, because they've allowed those rules to get in, get in to go in place. And there's a real fundamental issue with the closeness of uh, Australian um, governments to the industry. And, uh, you know, I don't know whether it's because 
uh, the industry as such large donors to both political parties, um, whether that gets them results or because it's the, the revolving door between industry and government. So there's a real problem with the cosiness between um, the government and even the regulators and the industry. And, um, and the end result is that really we're giving the, we're giving the resource away for free and allowing them to gouge Australian households and businesses on prices. So um, it's a real disaster and it's difficult to see uh, how that can be solved in the short term. So what is the solution? Is it time to reintroduce a mineral resources rent tax? Uh, I think we need a complete overhaul of the tax system. We need an inquiry into how we got into this situation and, um, and uh, you know, how we can dig our way out of it. But, the, but currently Australians are not getting uh, anything like a sufficient return on our resources. So I think we need to, I think we need to start with a complete uh, inquiry into how this happened and, and an overhaul of the whole system. And in the immediate term, we need a windfall profits tax to claw some of these windfall profits back so that we can assist households and industry who are being smashed by these high uh, energy prices. Mark Oak, thank you. Pleasure.